Welcome to the Naked Life Podcast, where stripping is a way of life. I'm your host, Lo Wentworth. Shall we get started? Because I know you're ready. Hello, and welcome back to the Naked Life Podcast. I'm very excited about this topic today. I'm excited because it's, you know, me launching a signature program of mine, but I'm so excited to talk about validation. And I'm excited to talk about it to share my own journey and how I coach people who come to me who are in my orbit talking about validation. God, ah, validation. Like, how often do we seek validation outside? I mean, be honest with yourself. How often do you seek other people's opinions before you finally make a decision on something? Do you research the shit out of something even though your little intuition was going, this is right, until you finally make a move? Are you seeking permission to do whatever it is that you want to do? Are you seeking something outside yourself? Usually means you're seeking validation outside yourself. And that's okay. I'm not here to make you wrong, and I'm definitely not here to support your inner voice telling you, not your inner voice, your inner a-hole, telling you that you are wrong. You're not wrong. You just learned different coping mechanisms to survive. You became a chameleon to read off of other people's emotions their body language, like you became a fine-tuned human detector. And you had to do that growing up in order to survive, in order to keep yourself safe, whatever that may be, safe from physical harm, safe from emotional harm, just trying to make the calm seas happen instead of being in the choppy, rigid storm water that you've grown up in your whole life. And now you're here. Learning how to regulate your nervous system, learning that it is okay to do whatever it is that you want, learning to let go of second guessing and just going with the flow of your intuition. It's all a practice and it takes baby steps. Now validation. So the signature program I am launching and you can sign up for with the link in the bio or you can head to my IG to find it is sacred validation. Sacred Validation is a four-week-long mastermind where there are three live modules of teaching and the last module is Q&A and integration. And it's to build the foundation of you. It's to build that foundation you so desperately desire that you don't even know you want and need to start being confident in your own skin. To actually tell those around you who are draining you and taking advantage of you to fuck off. It is the foundational piece to boundary setting. Yes, foundational piece to boundary setting. I know that's a buzzword for a lot of people, but what people don't really understand is the basic boundary to set is no. That's the very first boundary you need to set. It's the foundational boundary. So sacred validation is learning all about how to validate yourself, how to validate your own feelings, how to validate your own wants and needs, what it looks like to navigate through that And knowing what you feel is what you feel and is not someone else's. Knowing the dream you're going after is what you want and you're not trying to prove someone else wrong or trying to seek someone else's love. And I have a very unpopular opinion here and part of the whole reason it has taken me so long up until about a year ago, six months ago, maybe even three months ago, who the hell even knows, up until this point of actually going after what I want is knowing that what I'm going after or what I want is what I want. And I'm not seeking the love and validation of others. And then I'm definitely not out there trying to prove people wrong. So the unpopular opinion that I see a lot in the motivational space and going after your goals is to prove people wrong. If you're going after your goals to prove people wrong, you're still seeking out their validation. If you're going after something to prove people wrong, you are still seeking out their validation. 
let that sink in. I know it's a motivator for a lot of people, but I have also witnessed studying people, how they navigate things like mentors, role models. In the beginning, it was Gabby Bernstein and Lewis Howes and Matthew Hussey. And I was following them and it was just very interesting how all of their stories were the same. They're like five years into it. I reached to this pinnacle point of whatever success would be. And I felt empty inside because they were going after whatever it was, whatever the goal was that they assumed they wanted to prove people wrong. And they felt empty because those people you're trying to prove wrong don't actually give a fuck. They don't. They're not going to magically see you become a... New York Times bestselling author and be like, I was wrong about you. No, they're not. They want to see you fall. They're going to nitpick at everything and you're never going to get their validation. You're not. You are never going to get that validation from them because most people aren't going to own up to the fact that they were wrong. Most. You do. The people you're surrounding yourself around, the mentors you're surrounding yourself around, take radical responsibility of that. So you're building that. But those who you are still seeking love and affection and validation from, they're never going to give that to you. And that's a hard truth you have to accept. A hard truth. They're never going to say that they were wrong. They're never going to say that they love you as you are. Like that is your responsibility. Which is beautiful that is your responsibility, but also at the same time, you f- feeling anger and that the fucked upness of all everything you feel, the grief of the fact that you have to unlearn the things growing up that you should have never learned in the first place. Like you should have been a happy-go-lucky child and figuring out all the things and trying all the things and discovering who you are instead of discovering who you are and claiming your life for the first time ever, ever. I did a whole podcast about how you're not behind and as a cycle breaker, you're not behind. You're actually going to move forward when you make these shifts quite, quite fast because you know what it's like to be the chameleon, be the shell of who you are. And then you know what it's like to crawl, beg, steal, not beg, but borrow, break, crawl out of that dark hole, like just crawling to that top and fighting every day to become the person you've known you've meant you've been meant to be this whole entire time you know what it's like to fight so hard to become her to become you to create the version of you you know you're meant to be in the healthy version having fun knowing who you are feeling confident in your own skin validating your own feelings and regulating that and leaning on people you trust to support you and vice versa instead of being the strong one instead of being the one everyone always goes to to fix things and it's okay to be angry about that it's okay to grieve that in my own journey, I'm, I, I'm processing the fact that there was someone in my life growing up who I've recently accepted is a narcissist. Or if you want to be nice about it, has very strong narcissist characteristics. And I don't throw that around lightly because I feel like narcissist is a buzzword that everyone uses for toxic traits in people or emotionally unavailable people. Let me make this clear. Narcissists are emotionally unavailable people, but not all emotionally unavailable people are narcissists. Narcissists are emotionally unavailable people, but not all emotionally unavailable people are narcissists. And I'll give the example of myself. For a while, and then getting to that point of being emotionally available for a partner, for my man, calling him in, doing the things that I need to do to shift to call him in faster into my life right now because I am ready. But I wasn't ready a year ago. I wasn't ready six months ago. I wasn't even ready a month ago to go down this journey and be like, I am ready for this. And I was emotionally unavailable. But that does not mean I was a narcissist. It does not mean I'm a toxic person. It just means in my healing journey, I was emotionally unavailable for it. And that's okay. A lot of times in your healing journey, you're not 
emotionally available to let a million people in right away. And that's okay. That doesn't make you wrong. Some like the caterpillar, you have to go into your little cocoon with the support of those around you who are very specific and very strategic that you have chosen to help you during this process to go into that little cocoon to heal what you need to heal, clear what you need to clear so you're able to move forward freely and stand on your own two feet or fly with those beautiful butterfly wings when you finally come out of your cocoon. So that's okay. But getting back to, I'm on the journey of accepting that the love of this person wasn't it going through the process and feeling and grieving and just being very upset and going through like the love, like this person doesn't really love me. They love me to the best of their ability that they can. But even then it's not, it's not what we, it's not true love because they don't accept me as I am. And they don't respect my boundaries. They they do everything under the sun to emotionally manipulate me, guilt trip me, make me feel bad, shame me, and all of that. And I'm also dealing with the, the I don't want to say the narcissist su- supporters, but the people around that are also just either so much in the fawning of this person or not wanting to rock the boat and deal with this person's wrath that I also get put under the microscope and told I was wrong, that I'm the difficult one, that I'm the one that needs to change, that I'm the one that's always looking for a fight. And it's kind of like being on this lonely little island, which I am okay with. I'm okay with that because I had to come back to my childhood home. I had to come back to the place I grew up to reclaim parts of me that were lost and take back my power and I couldn't do it anywhere else other than into the belly of the beast and I know for some people that's not supportive that they can do reclaim their power outside the belly of the beast but for me I had to go into the belly of the beast but getting back to that is also like this whole intense like grieving process that I am through going through and getting to the other side, but there's still bouts of it because grief is like a wild horse. It comes and goes and it's just free and sometimes it'll just hit you in a moment that you're just like, shit. But grieving through this process of the letting go of the illusion of who I thought this person was and accepting them as they are now and really allowing myself to be angry at that fact, be angry at the world, the universe, the creator. I struggle with using the term God because I have very strong issues with the Bible and how that was created. Um, basically I don't like it when people withheld information from me, never will hold information from me, especially when it's like a decision I have to make. Like you have to give me the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. So I can make an informed decision anyways but grieving that and accepting that and I was just talking to my coach about it and it was just like I was so mad and angry and upset because I'm like this person doesn't actually love me it doesn't and I feel like it was just I was sold a bill of goods and that this person is a fraud and that like just being upset that I bought into it but I also didn't know any better because this person is the adult in the situation and I am the child And so it's just going through that and she was just reminding me like they could love the best of capacity that they love me at for what they're capable of. They just don't know what a healthy love looks like. And that's a whole other podcast, but it's just like going back to like grieving and being angry and upset that you even have to start this process of forming your own identity and validating yourself and learning that for the first time in your life in adulthood when you should have learned it in your childhood. And whatever comes up is okay. Just don't make yourself wrong. And if you're in a place where you're working through acceptance of this, it's okay to be like, I'm in a public place and I can't break down right now. That's okay. But allow yourself the space to either get to your car and break down or get home and break down, whether it's beating the crap out of a pillow as you're screaming with rage music going on to let it all out. But give yourself that space to release and let go what you're feeling because you're safe and capable of navigating that and letting the emotions run through you 
that they won't take over, but allow yourself that freedom to feel your emotions instead of stuffing them down where they build up resentment and hold you back further. Give yourself that freedom. You can do that. And that's the whole process of validating yourself and validating your feelings and understand what it is that you want and what it is you are feeling instead of what people have told you to feel or how you thought you should feel to keep make sure the waters were calm and the boat didn't rock as much as possible. So yeah, getting getting to validation and sacred validation. So sacred validation sacred means we if you're new here, like words are very specific. Like I have a journalism degree. I went to law school. Like it has and been even before I did the mindset work and started my own awakening process, being very specific with your words and intentional and knowing their meaning has been deeply, deeply ingrained in me. Journalism degree, went to law school. Words. Words, be very specific and intentional with your words. So I always go to the definition of what they are, whether uh, Webster's or dictionary.com. And then from there, I learn and navigate what the definition is to me. So sacred means entitled to to reverence and respect. So you are a sacred being, being who is entitled to reverence and respect. You're entitled to reverence and respect, even your own, even your own. And then we get to the word validation. Validation is the act of affirming a person or their ideas, feelings, and actions are acceptable and worthy. So it's the act of affirming a person or their ideas, feelings, and actions are acceptable and worthy. You are worthy. (laughs) you are worthy of your own validation you are worthy of your own actions of your own feelings you do not need to look outside yourself to think to get the approval that you are quote unquote living life life right or doing it right this comes from within and you were taught to second guess your second guess yourself so it's not easy or natural for you to validate what comes through within your intuition and your inner knowing and that is okay just give yourself grace through this process write it out you are allowed to be mad at yourself because I know looking back hindsight 2020 you're just like oh my god why did I date that guy oh my god why did I decide to do that oh man like just looking at the college days oh my god why did I think 100 proof was a good idea and letting my friend mix my drinks that I knew she was making them super strong yeah mm -hmm. was best friends with the toilet the next day but it's like you you look back in hindsight and you beat yourself up you're going to beat yourself up It's going to happen. You now are learning to only be there for a hot second instead of your lifetime. A hot second versus a hot minute or a hot hour or your hot lifetime. A hot second. Allow your emotions to feel through. Allow yourself to get mad at yourself because that is also part of the healing process and rebuilding and healing a relationship with yourself. Navigating through all that is what you've been taught learning unlearning learning who you are and healing your relationship with you is just like healing your relationship with your partner with a family member with a friend like it starts with you and learning to validate yourself is a foundational piece for building you and feeling confident in your own skin and having that strong foundation to set those boundaries because you show yourself the self-respect that you deserve and you no longer abandon yourself because you're staking a hill staking your claim dying on a hill that is you saying no more no more so okay let's talk about why validation is so hard for you right now or hard for anyone and it is the fear of abandonment So the fear of abandonment comes from like somewhere along the lines you were abandoned. And it's even deeper seated in the fear of abandonment is actually the fear of reconnecting or connecting with yourself in the first place. And if you want to go to even back to like reconnecting with yourself when you were a little child, whether it be like five, six, seven, three, four, whatever, before seven, 
you could say you're reconnecting with your true essence. Some of those, if you're similar to me, you're just reconnecting or connecting with yourself for the first fucking time ever. Because a lot of you believe your childhood was stolen from you. In a lot of ways, your childhood was stolen from you. And it doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it okay. It's just one of the things of acceptance so you can move through and start healing deeper your relationship with yourself. So since the fear of abandonment comes from actually the fear of reconnecting with yourself or connecting with yourself for the first time, you cling to others' thoughts and emotions and ideas. To, Because you think and believe when you cling to others' thoughts, emotions, and ideas and feelings that you're being accepted, that you will not be abandoned, that you're being loved, that you're being validated. Instead, it's an illusion. It's your chameleon self coming out in an unhealthy way because it is trying to seek the same validation and acceptance and not trying to rock the boat like you learned growing up. So your chameleon self where you learn to be the chameleon whatever it is whatever people need like being fixing that squeaky wheel as I like to call it like I know I'm very good at finding the squeaky wheel and morphing myself into the ability to fix that squeaky wheel which makes me very versatile and makes me an asset I'm able to learn different skills like I know a little about a, a little bit about a lot of things like that's amazing that's amazing But also, when it comes to people and relationships and being vulnerable, that's when it comes in and it's just like I'm trying or I was trying to say what I thought others wanted me to say always was 20 steps ahead of someone to so I could navigate and give the illusion of protecting myself so I wouldn't get hurt and I would be accepted when I wasn't actually being accepted as who I am still feeling lost on this lonely little island of mine wishing people would come and join me and be like yes we stake this claim we'll be with you it's us against the world instead of feeling very lonely and that comes from being vulnerable so on early on in this journey is I decided I would do everything and anything that made me feel vulnerable. And so I do. Sometimes, a lot of times, I do not do it in the moment. I'm getting better at that, like, sharing my feelings, sharing what is up with me. Like, I have a very dear friend of mine who she is helping me heal the sisterhood wound in so many ways. Like, she can even imagine. And I take the time to check in with myself and actually express and be vulnerable with where I am at instead of saying like, oh, I'm fine. Oh, things are great. No, things are not, not great. (laughs) Not at all. I think one of the, one of the examples is, okay, Mm. there's a cat on, at my parents' place and I saved them. I saved two out of the three of them. One was just very sick and I could tell like it just, it wasn't going to survive. And there was really nothing I could do to get into the vicinity of this cat to help it survive. It was very, it was very feral. And one of the things since I grew up witnessing my grandfather build relationship with cats and feral cats and what that looks like to build that trust with them, like I wasn't going to force myself on it to build that trust. And it just like the moment I knew that this cat wasn't going to survive the next day, it was gone. Like I could, I did what I could to create like warm space for it to like make it feel safe, but it was gone. So there was this other cat. And she, she and I like build this bond. And then right before I was supposed to go visit my good friend, I found her on the road. I found her on the road, you know, immediately was shocked finding her on the road and like did what I had to put the, like put her in a safe space until I could come back to do my own honoring and burial ceremony of this little kitten. It was just like, I come up to my friend's place and she's like, how are you? And it was just instantly I told her about the cat and was going in and she held space for me and my own grieving process about this this kitten and just what was actually up for me in that moment where in the past I would have been like, oh, I'm fine. Like, how are you? So that's just a testament of like building trust with people and validating my own feelings and have someone reflect that back to me. 
and that is a piece of vulnerability but to to be vulnerable with other people you have to be vulnerable with yourself which means you also have to learn how to validate your own thoughts feelings desires and actions that you did and that takes a lot of vulnerability and it takes a lot of bravery to face yourself and it's not easy and that's okay that's why you're surrounding yourself with people who do it every day who share with you what comes up for them and how they navigate the process you are learning by witnessing others and now you're taking that step to start validating yourself and what that looks like for you And you can go as fast, as slow as you need. There's no need to rush healing the relationship with yourself. There's no need to rush building the identity of who you are, knowing what hobbies you like, your likes and dislikes. There is no rush. It may feel like it is a rush right now because you feel like you're behind since your childhood was snatched out from under you and you didn't have that opportunity to build your own self-identity to find out what you like and dislike to try all of the things to discover what your hobbies are and build from there i mean i follow a bunch of accounts that talk about like coming from a a dysfunctional family and being the scapegoat and or the black sheep my grandma likes me to call myself the explorer um because in her own mind, the definition of black sheep and scapegoat is very, very different. It's what you would traditionally think is like the bad kid or who would get into drugs or trouble with the law, like always in trouble type of thing. And just following it. And it was just one of the things that hit home was like struggling to say what your hobbies are. And struggling with the sense of saying what your hobbies are because you didn't learn them growing up because you weren't able to create your own self-identity at all because you were this chameleon trying to be whatever you needed to those around you especially the adults so that they could feel safe in their own skin which it should have been the other way around growing up with emotionally unavailable people is very hard to accept it wasn't easy and it's not really it's not an easy life to navigate either so since you weren't able to develop your self-identity you weren't also able to valid learn what it is to like your validate yourself or have and see what healthy validation looks like because everything has a healthy version and unhealthy version of it like I was talking again with my friend on this and we were talking about dating because she's she's been married has kids we're the same age roughly and I'm single and we're just talking about like dating apps and some of her single friends and what they're going through and it was just like the whole hobbies things it's just talking about like building the self-identity and she's like would you ever get on a a dating app and I'm like "Uh, I have no desire to get on dating apps right now I think they're lazy I I hate them it's like putting your resume up on there and it's just like you look at how to build a profile and they're like in your pictures you should have like not full body you should have some full body you should have some clothes you should show yourself with friends you should show yourself doing your hobbies that you like and I go to her I'm like with these pictures of showing like hobbies that I like like hiking I very much enjoy the outdoors and hiking and just wandering the woods and it's just like if I'm I'm doing that I not want to take a picture of myself doing that because I'm doing it. Taking a picture of myself doing, allegedly doing the hiking, to me takes myself out of the moment and present and then I'm doing it for someone else. <laughs> oh, it's just like, it's equivalent to me where I see people post like little reels of them crying or pictures of them crying and it's just like, you would never see me post a reel of me crying or a picture of me crying Because to me, that means they're seeking outside validation of themselves. Yes, they're wanting to be seen in this raw moment. And I'm just like, it's attention seeking to me, not in the healthy way. So you will never see me do that. You will see me get choked up on podcasts. You will see me get choked up on lives or even cry on lives or even cry on podcasts because those are in the moment and I'm sharing with you real time. It's not me setting the intention that, oh, I'm going to cry during this podcast. Talking about the cat and the grieving the loss of her is still a struggle. Like I can still feel like the constriction in my throat right now, but I'm opening up and saying like, it's a process that I'm in, but I'm not going to take a picture and be like, oh my God, this is what happened. And like, no, it's intention seeking from millions of people who you're seeking validation from that you will never get validation from going back to the, it's just, uh, but 
because it doesn't seem real to me. It seems like you're just posturing and seeking attention. So, like, going back to the the dating apps, and I'm just like, I don't want to put the hobbies on. Like, this, like, it's, it's, it goes back to also, like, one of the interviewing process for a job. And the question that I hate is, like, what, what would your friends describe you as? Or what are your three top qualities? And I'm like, God. I don't like speaking for other people. I don't know. Ask my friends. What do my friends think of me? I don't know. Ask them. They would know better than me. I'm just going to be guessing. And then getting back to like what your three top qualities are. I'm like, if I have to tell you what my three top qualities are, then I am not them. I should just embody them. And then it also feels like it's a secret test. So if I tell you like the three things that I think I am, that they don't match up to who you are seeing, then it's just like a disconnect there. I just... It just goes, like, if I have to tell you who I am, like, then I'm not that person. I should just be it. Just be it. Going on my little little rant there about seeking validation from others. But the whole process of learning to validate yourself means you stop seeking permission for others. You start learning to communicate clearly what your needs are, what your desires are. And you unlearn the belief that putting yourself first doesn't make you difficult, doesn't make you selfish, it doesn't make you a bad person, it doesn't make you wrong. <laughs> we'll talk about moms here and the mom guilt. Like putting yourself first and showing your children what it looks like to put yourself first is valuable. It is so valuable and I never speak from the authority of being a mom because I'm not one yet, but I speak from the authority of the daughter who had to unlearn this and had to unfuck herself from this, had to understand that mom guilt is a manipulation tool to make the mother feel better, not the child. Whew. Let that set in. Mom guilt is a manipulation to make the mother feel better, not the child putting you're putting your mom guilt on your children so you it makes you feel b- better no stop whoo whoo that's hitting home real hard here um because i know a lot of mothers follow me i know i work with a lot of mothers like a lot of groups i go to magically there are a lot of mothers there and it's just very interesting witnessing and in me providing that example of like you taking time for yourself like i wish God, I wish my mother would have done that. So, God, so much so. I remember in college I was reading an article and it was a male who wrote it and he was talking about how his mom taught the val- him the value of me time because in the mornings, the first hour, she was in the bathroom doing God knows what, getting ready for the day, probably crying, probably feeling sad that she was doing this, but also taking the time for herself for that first hour and they knew not to knock on that door unless someone was there was a broken blown bone someone was bleeding profusely like there was fire because it was her time and he didn't realize that at such a young age as as he got older he realized that she was teaching him the value of taking time for yourself and setting those boundaries and what it looked like in a healthy way so you would feel good about yourself and I think she was a stay-at-home mom, so she he was like, she put on makeup and all of this and to make herself feel good because she wasn't going out to see other people. She was taking care of her chitlins and showing you the value of that. And I remember reading that. I'm like, oh my God, I wish, I wish I would have seen this growing up. I wish. Because he didn't come from a place of like she was being selfish. He came from a place like she was teaching them the value and the self-respect of what it looks like to put yourself first. In a way that is healthy, that builds you up, that fills up your cup instead of depleting it. Yes, there are the unhealthy version of putting yourself first makes you a selfish person. In different ways. Not not the ways it takes care of yourself. Like taking that hour if you're a mom for yourself. Getting centered, being you so you can show up as that parent, as that cycle breaker to hold the space of your children who are learning to navigate their emotions and seeking your validation that your emotions, their emotions aren't wrong, whatever it may be, the chaos that is within them. 
So you can hold that space of, of validating and affirming instead of what your parents probably did to you was to yell at you and say you were wrong, that you should man up, stop crying, be a big boy, put your good girl, big girl panties on, like do that, not crying instead of holding the space to allow the emotions of your child to flow through. And you have to give yourself that first. You have to give yourself that first and validate yourself through that process. And it is a process and give yourself grace is one of the things that I've learned and witnessed and known like in my own I eventually become a mother is like I I'm well aware that something I do something's just going to fuck up my child <laughs> because I am human that there could be a moment where I yell at the ch- my child there could be a moment where you yell at your child instead of holding that face and trying to be able to allow their emotions to run freely or whatever it may be that's fine but you know the tools to help them unfuck themselves you know the tools to help them navigate this process and take that responsibility on whenever they come to you and say like it could be 30 years from now and be like you know this moment like I understand like what you're going through mom but it really hurt and taking like I I'm sorry I'm sorry that I did that that it hurt you like I understand where you're coming from and I'm sorry like I take responsibility for that radical responsibility is so hard for people it's okay it's it's challenging for me sometimes especially in my low moments it's challenging for even my mentor like it's all around it's just part of navigating the process so sacred validation Mm, i'm so so this whole like program i'm so excited about it and it's just it's I'm excited because it has three foundational pillars where it's like acknowledge honor then shift acknowledge honor shift Ah, that acronym came out of nowhere when I did this. So you acknowledge where you are are at. You acknowledge the feelings. You acknowledge whatever relationships you are in. You are, you just acknowledgement. And that takes a lot of vulnerability and facing yourself and just taking an honest inventory of your life at the moment. Very honest, very raw, and that's okay. It means that you are, like, acknowledgement means you are no longer choosing to abandon yourself and you're starting to show yourself the respect and self-trust you deserve. Acknowledging where you are at, how you are feeling, uh, taking an inventory up until this point means you're choosing to no longer abandon yourself. Let that sink in. You, by acknowledging you, you are choosing to no longer abandon yourself. You are choosing to stake a claim, die on this hill, being like, I'm no longer abandoning myself. Yes, it's going to be hard to acknowledge all the shit up until this point. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not going to be easy because you need to learn to feel all those emotions to release so they no longer have power over you. So you're acknowledging yourself. You are choosing yourself for the first time ever. And acknowledging and validating your own feelings. I mean, if you're like me, you grew up navigating a family who constantly invalidated your own feelings. Like, they would invalidate you. It would confuse you to the point you would just give up and accept whatever their truth is their truth. Like, they became the god. The god of the family. Whatever they were feeling, whatever they were doing, was rule for all. So it's like the saying, rules for thee but not for me that's what it is so it's so confusing and also during this process when you're navigating and in the holiday season right now because a family is a huge trigger and there's lots of fawning that happens from family family members and sweeping it under the rug and you're no longer available to sweep it under the rug it doesn't mean you are wrong it just you got to accept other people's journey during the process so then fawning and what fawning looks like a lot of times is very challenging is like I talk to one of my siblings about the behaviors of one of our parents and it's just like I thought this person was on my side because they were agreeing with me but then in the presence of this person or something happens where I get thrown to the gauntlet because this person got triggered since I'm not releasing my boundaries I've set very firm boundaries I'm not backing down from some from boundary some of these boundaries like being an emotional punching bag then it flips the switch and it's like then I'm like 
I need to calm down. I'm the one looking for the fight. I'm this. Like, it's the fawning of, like, you know, you need to understand where this person's coming from. And it was just, it was very hard in this, this retrospect because <sighs> this person told me it wasn't family anymore. And it was just, like, I know it was a tactic to, to get me to back down and press some buttons. And I'm like, okay, fine. If I'm not family anymore, then I am done. And it was one of the other family members I was talking to about this was just like, that was stupid. He said that he shouldn't have said that, but it's, there's no calling out the other person. And it's like, you're not really validating my own feelings. If you're not calling out the other person and you're being okay with that. But then it's looking back and like, this person is in their fawning stage. They, they're not to that space of actually acknowledging, actually acknowledging and owning up to the fact that some, the behavior is not okay all around because this person, like you, you set this person off. It's like, you could just breathe wrong and it sets this person off. And I, in talking about it with another family member, it, it, it's just like, they know it, but they're not ready to know it. Because that means it's going to bring up a lot of shit that you and I are both working through. And, and what I have worked through to validate my own feelings in this process and what that looks like for me. So I, I'm standing on my own little island and I'm okay with standing on my own little island because I have learned the process of validating my own feelings and acknowledging it and being okay with the we the wave of acceptance and happiness and grief and that all comes through and the anger and the sacred rage. You're allowed to be angry about it. I know as women, they don't, people are not... People are very uncomfortable when a woman is mad and in her sacred rage and you're allowed to be angry and you're capable of holding that space within yourself to be angry about whatever it is. You're allowed to be there and you have the capacity to hold that space and validate your own feelings. And that is okay if you're going through knowing going into the family holidays that there's going to be a lot of people who will who you will still seek validation from because it throws you into that environment of back of how you used to be just witness yourself with curiosity through this process bring in curiosity detach yourself and just witness through it and notice when people are fawning walk away from conversations that are not supporting you and that are triggering you you can walk away from someone who is like the example of being a lot of times when it's just like when I was being told that I was the one looking for the fight, I was not the one looking for the fight. It's it's when I go down into the communal space, I know I have to be on guard and there is no way in hell I'm going to let my guard down because it's like a shark scenting blood in the water. And maybe there'll become a day where I'll let my guard down and I'll just be super detached from whatever outcome that is. Today is not that day. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. And I'm like, you cannot tell me to let my guard down because this person go always goes on the attack. You cannot tell me I'm being too difficult or because I'm maintaining boundaries to help and support me because that is that's a no fly zone for me. That is, mm -mm. you can try to tell me I'm being difficult and maintaining a boundary that I'm not an emotional punching bag. That's fine. Look there, I'm validating myself, acknowledging the fact that this person is not capable of validating my boundary because it triggers them in a way because I'm not backing down in the sense of like, I'm not an emotional punching bag and you're no longer, the person who does the emotional punching bag, you're no longer available to do this. Like, it's not going to happen. And I'm not backing down. And you think I'm being difficult, which is fine because it's triggering you that someone is actually standing on their own two feet. And being like, no, this is not okay. And standing up for themselves. Lots of validation going on with living in a family that is, it's just, it, it's, it's just so interesting. Some days it's easier to detach. Other days it's just like, whew, this is, this is very hard and challenging day. It's like I'm, I'm treading the choppy water instead of just floating in the sun. A lot of water analogies going on today. Uh, so acknowledging 
the next step is honoring. So honoring the fact of how far you come, honoring your survival skills, honoring what the lessons they taught you, honoring it, honoring the person you had to become in order to protect yourself and honoring the process of letting go of that person letting go of that person it can be very challenging because you're afraid you're going to lose your identity altogether let me make it clear you will not lose the characteristics and traits and the strong attributes of that person you were you will not lose you're only losing the identity of who you were that you no longer are and it's it's that constant death and rebirth cycle that I talked about as women because we go through it monthly monthly with our menstrual cycle death and rebirth process all the time <laughs> and it's just honoring the fact that it's, it's constant death and rebirth process and right now it's the death of who you were and you're actually honoring and burying it and doing that viking or greek Greek burial honor of setting fire to who you were to release and rise from the ashes as the phoenix that you are and it's okay to grieve that process but you're honoring it and it's honoring how far you come and also honoring your pace that you know some days it's going to be a millimeter shift you're going to be crawling crawling out of that deep dark hole that dark tunnel towards the light instead of striding and running towards it like some days you feel like you are and that's okay it's honoring your own process honoring your process is validating yourself it means you are sticking in your own lane you have got those blinders on it's like with horses on their harnesses they have the little blinders on their eyes to help them focus so a lot of times when people go on trail rides or if they know that they're going to be going walking along the highway where a horse could easily get very distracted and spooked they put the side blinders on to focus them to to focus on what's in front of them focus on what's ahead of them so if you need to put those blinders on the side of your eyes just to focus on what is in front of you then do that that's all part of the honoring process and staying in your own lane and validating yourself it's, I mean, it's just a constant repeat because we've been taught that to invalidate ourselves more often than to validate ourselves. So learn, on learning the process of invalidation to learn the process of validation, it takes honoring who you are, who you were, and honoring your own journey. Honoring it and not looking around and second guessing it because it doesn't look like what someone else has been through. So you got to acknowledge, honor and shift. So before you can shift with like shifting your mindset and people talking about that and doing all the things and regulating your nervous system and just all of the things all at once, you have to, before you can even shift your nervous system, because I'm also on this journey of healing my nervous system, what that looks like, being certified to support others, even in different modalities, deeper than tapping, deeper than hypnosis, deeper than meditation, deeper than all of what I have learned thus far with regulating my nervous system. But I also have learned during this process that you, you can't shift and regulate your nervous system without acknowledging and honoring where you are at. Without acknowledging and honoring where you're at, you're not going to be able to shift. You just are not. And I talk about shifting in a prior podcast about this belief bridge and with mantras and affirmations. And I go back of like the struggle, uh, what they don't teach you about acknowledging and honoring your out with affirmations when you're saying, I forgive Sally, when internally you're like, mm -mm, that is all wrong. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It creates when you're saying, I forgive Sally, but it's creating this this restriction in your body, like a boa constrictor going for the kill of its meal, just constricting, creating the type because you're at war with yourself because your words don't acknowledge what your body is feeling. So to get there on this belief bridge, instead of saying, I forgive Sally, it's saying, I'm willing to forgive Sally, or I want to forgive Sally, 
whatever feels good in your nervous system and how it feels in your body. It goes from that bubble constricting, like, mm, this is too wrong to this. Oh, and it can be the slightest shift within you that feels light. So whether it's like, I'm willing to forgive or I want to forgive Sally means you're acknowledging the fact that you're not ready to forgive Sally. You're not ready, so you're acknowledging your feelings within your body that you are not ready to forgive Sally, but you want to forgive Sally, or you're willing to forgive Sally. Like, you have this willingness to shift out of this vibration, shift this out of your body, and regulate your nervous system on the process, but you're just not there to be full-on say, I'm forgive Sally. And we'll link into this episode, the prior episode, talking about the belief bridge, or you can head to my Instagram. I'll, I have a post there talking about the belief bridge and what that process is. But to regulate your nervous system, you have to acknowledge and honor where you're at. You have to acknowledge what is coming up for you in your body in order to shift out of it. So you cannot step into the identity of you. You can't even form the new identity of you until you learn to honor where you are at and acknowledge it to shift out of it. Because for you to shift into and create your self-identity to know what your hobbies are, your dislikes are, what you want to do, acknowledging that moving forward and creating this strong foundation of who you are so you feel at home in your own skin and confident in your own skin, you have to, have to acknowledge what is coming up within you and what that looks like. And in order to move and shift into the person you're meant to be, to shifting into those little shifts Whether it's wanting to try a planting class or going to a photography class or just going for a walk and learning how to set those boundaries and how they support you and what no looks like to you and feels like in your body and learning the art of detachment through all of this to be able to shift in who you are. God, the art of attachment. It's just like it's something that I've learned. It's been an ongoing process, but it, I haven't fully embodied it until now because I'm witnessing a sibling of mine that I have to detach and let them, they're on their own journey and just watch it as it goes and be the support when they need it, but not be the, the doomsday or like, or the, like you're doing this wrong. No, just detaching from it and detaching and stepping out of like the. Pre- protector the provider role like the responsibility I remember and it's the best gift my grandma has ever given me and I remember calling her up in college it was after I talked to one of my parents and there was stuff going on and it was just like I was away and I was talking to my grandma and my grandma's like like that that is on them like they can take care of themselves it's no longer a responsibility like it's on them it's not on you And I'm paraphrasing that, but that like changed me in so many profound ways of where I was starting the art of detachment without realizing it. I mean, college was the first time I was away from everything and detaching from the role of who I was or who I had to be or who I thought I had to be and start building in who I was meant to be. It still took me a while to get to this place of self-identity of who I am and what that looks like to me. And no longer trying to be people's cup of tea and just being like, I'm, I'm the shot of whiskey. All right, I'm a shot of whiskey. That's fine. We'll go with it. No longer trying to be the cup of tea. So doing this whole process of sacred validation, like I could go on and on and on and on. Like there's so much more I could talk about this with you guys, but really the best way to experience this is jump in to this mastermind. It's just a month long. The link is in the bio. Right now I'm running a special on it and I'll probably be running that through my birthday in December. But really it's giving your gift the process of what this looks like and joining a community and working with me to help you through this process of building and shifting and acknowledging and learning what it is to validate yourself to build that confidence because a lot of times when people are talking about building confidence the byproduct of healing relationship with yourself is confidence but healing your relationship with yourself 
starts with the foundational purpose of validation and learning what validation looks like for you because you are worthy of this. You are worthy of your own validation. You are worthy of your own love. You are worthy of your own self-respect. And taking this time to build the strong foundation to create the identity that it is of you is worth it in the long run. It is worth it. You are not behind. Start now. Get ahead of the new year. Like building you, building and living the fullest of expression of you it doesn't matter when you could be 80 years old you could be 20 years old you could be eight years old you could be 35 years old it could be anywhere time but when the moment you decide you are worth living the fullest expression of you that begins the process and that is where sacred validation is for you it is for you. And if you have questions reach out to me at my IG the dot naked dot life dot co or email me wherever it is you can get my contact information in the show notes and just choosing you choosing you and before I hop off and talk to you in Instagram or see you next time on the podcast I want to leave you with this question I want to leave you with this question because it's very profound when are you going to stop abandoning yourself When are you going to stop abandoning yourself and choose you for the first time in your life? And with that, I'll see you in Sacred Validation and I will see you next week. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Naked Life Podcast. Please remember to rate, review, subscribe to this podcast and share with all your friends.